Hi, I'm Bufo at the Hydroflex uh, factory in Oceanside and I'm trying to explain why surfboards are breaking and what we are doing different on our boards. So basically, a surfboard is a foam core like this one and a lamination on the top of the foam core. And the problem is the foam core is way lighter than the glass around it. The glass is more or less like normal glass, like window glass if it comes to the weight, while the foam is like way, way lighter. So if the board is bending too much, it always tries to separate exactly where the materials are lying flat onto each other, which is pretty normal because they are that different, they have to split at the area where they just lay together. So what we are doing different at Hydroflex, we are having like 10,000 small fiberglass, fiberglass roots running into the core. So we don't need a stringer or a sandwich construction to stiffen the board up. The board can bend because the fiberglass is just very well bonded to the foam core. And this happens by, by those 10, 15,000 micro roots of fiberglass running straight into the core. So if you look, take a look at one of these boards, we see a, a couple of points of blue, greenish fiberglass roots running straight into the core. And that, that is bonding those different materials together, forming a very light construction, flexible. So these boards can't buckle or delaminate, so they're trying, if they would break, they're trying to break to the inside, like, it, yeah, like, uh, like a garden hose. If you bend it too much, it goes also to the inside because it can't buckle or delaminate. So what we are doing is, we are charging those boards with an internal pressure in order to give it more strength if it comes to the foam density and pressure resistance. So if you don't have a buckling or delamination problem anymore and can have the board flexible, there's still that other problem that boards are getting pressed a lot, getting dented after making aerials, floaters, hard turns, whatever. Um, so the problem is, especially on, on light foams like an EPS, which is a nice foam because it's recyclable, that the pressure resistance is very low. So what we are doing with our surfboards, we are pumping some air into it and that really helps a lot in order to get more pressure resistance. So that's my personal board. This board is really already used a couple of times. And even if this board is way lighter, way lighter than anything else on the market, it does not have a single pressure dent. And I can even show it. If I press into it, it kind, kind, kind of gives. So while standing on it, you're getting a kind of footprint in your board back at home, it's brand new. The good thing about it, you don't kick out the volume of your board, especially if it comes to the bottom. If you dent it, the board always comes back into, more or less into the old shape. So these uh, supercharger boards come with a small bike pump and a small adapter. That's the one you're putting into the valve. That's the valve. We see this one already has pressure, but you never know. So this one is already like on 4 PSI, so it's pretty charged and I can easily go up to 9 PSI. While doing that, the board is getting harder and it's changing the whole dampening and flex um, characteristic. So on choppy conditions, you want to have less pressure. On very clean conditions, glassy conditions, you can really go even with more pressure. I personally would say the boards, my boards, uh, I prefer something like two to four PSI pressure. So if you want to release some air in the water, you just press on the valve. Most of the time, especially in the morning sessions, it starts with offshore, turns onto onshore later. So if it's getting choppy, just make sure that you're getting a little bit less pressure. So it's really fun to play with the two and changes a lot. And after surfing your favorite board a couple of while, you're going to notice in what kind of conditions, um, which pressure you want to surf in there. So I personally, have a kind of low pressure, especially in the ocean side conditions, but it's, it's, a, it's a widest choice at the end. So that's one of my personal longboards. I'm basically more into shorter boards, but if I go longboarding, I want a knee pedal. And like you see, this board is pretty old and I like kneeing on them. So these boards dent, kind of soft and comfy for the knees. 
But if you go off them, there's not a single dent in them. And that's all because of the pressure pushing the foam back to the old level. We don't put any stringers on our surfboards because we want the whole surfboard uh, adapting to the waves curve and the water surface and for, uh, for that it has to bend, it has to be flexible, like this board here for example. So a stringer, if you would put a stringer in these constructions, the stringer would break before the board would break. And if you look at nature constructions like bones or plants, they don't have any stringers because there are no forces in the center of the board. This is why most of the stuff is hollow. The idea about a flexible surfboard is you want the board to adapt to the wave's curve and you want to flex it and flex back very quickly just in order to always adapt on what's happening on the wave's uh, um, surface. So what's basically, basically happening while turning, you are bending the board so the turns are getting tighter. Late dropping, instead of purling, the with all the surface in the nose, the board will just bend and don't purl that easily. If you walk the nose, you are tending to bend the board downwards, which, which just gives you more nose ride abilities and more, more glide. So it's, it's pretty, pretty adaptable to different moves. So these boards come with a very easy and high efficient construction using a stringerless EPS board, which is recyclable. That makes it very nice. If you want to check our recycling film on our, on our website, just go to hydroflex-surfboards.com and check it out. So this is not a molded board, it's all about shaping and designing boards. We don't need any molds in the process. So it can start with a CNC or just with a hand-shaped EPS blank and there it starts. We are working for different shapers like Cole, Lost, Patterson, Takayama, Nirvana and a couple of more. Jeff Clark, and there are so many more. We are just starting, it's getting nearly every week more shapers who are kind of interested in the product and especially uh, the performance the sport is really offering at the end. Yes. God.